Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3. In this episode we begin by forced completing the station crew rotation contract. For those who didn't watch the previous episode, what happened was we did a station crew rotation, but it didn't really count it as a station ro ro crew rotation because of the way we put together our station. Uh, because of the way it put together our station, it read uh, the significant portion of our station as the vehicle that was bringing crew to the station and wanted that whole thing to be deorbited instead of just the crew capsule. And so that, that that's all wrong. But hopefully the next time we get a station crew rotation contract it'll be a little bit more proper. We'll see. But for now I'm just going to... we did a proper station crew rotation. We brought crew up, we brought crew down. So I'm gonna say complete. Okay, and now we can move on to other things. The other things that we need to work on are, well, we're going to send a station into orbit around the moon. We are going to send crew, uh, at least one crew member, to orbit the moon and then return to fulfill this contract. And um, maybe we'll even have a docking of the station at the moon with the second Orpheus here. So this Orpheus will be used to fulfill this contract. Then we'll launch the station. And then, if I'm feeling extra confident, and if I have time today, uh, we will send the second Orpheus over there to dock with the Moonport 1. So we'll see about that. Anyway, uh, let me roll out Orpheus 2. Wow, it takes three days. It takes three days to roll out Orpheus 2 on the Olympus rocket. That's, that's rough. But, uh, well, anyway, I... I mean, our build times are not that long, you see. I mean, this is a moon port. This is a station for the moon, taking, uh, uh, given the amount of time, the uh, amount of progress we've already made, let's say 80 days or a little bit more than 80 days, 83 days or so, to build, which seems reasonable. and But it takes three days to roll it out. So I don't feel like we should be spending more upgrade points on upgrading, you know, increasing our build speed. But... It should be nice to have a shorter rollout time. Okay, so here we are. We've lined up with the moon and everything. Uh, 2,100 tons on the launch pad. Valentina is our Kerbal. Uh, throttle is up. SAS is on. And the boosters will ignite first. The uh, core does not ignite until we are underway. Though I'll probably want to ignite the core before we let go of the boosters. Alright, so ignition. launch and we're going Valentina is off to the moon hmm I think I forgot to fix the RCS thrusters on the second stage on this though we can sell the fuel down with the upper RCS, but that's not ideal. We've got lots of performance on one of the engines. Let's figure out which one. Well, should be, used to be high. Oh, there we go. Okay. Right. Let me keep an eye on that. Sort of deviated the wrong way there. Probably because of the loss of uh, performance. So, no, it's not loss of uh, uh, specific impulse, though. It's loss of thrust only. Interesting. Well, we can weather that and more. We we're going a little bit steeply, though, since I was checking out that engine. As usual, it's not turning as uh, quickly as I'd like it to after the MechJeb tweaks. So obviously what we'll need to do is keep that tank up and shut it down. We really need to turn faster than this. Okay, well that stage time is wrong. I've got to ignite the core now. 
that stage time is uh, only going with the booster with extra fuel right now. Okay, set. That booster a little bit off because, of course, it's still carrying fuel. Much heavier than the others. Separating off the launch escape system. Okay, we're a little bit higher than I wanted to be, but set. And ignition. That's down to the initial steepness of the orbit. I uh, brought it a little bit too steeply, but um, we should still have enough to reach the moon, no problems. Right now there's just this stage, the J2 stage, showing. We've got the fuel up here locked. And the fuel that we have in the Orpheus spacecraft should be enough to make orbit around the moon and then to break orbit and come back is the goal. Okay, we're about to make orbit. I'm managing the vertical speed here. And definitely enough fuel in the J2 stage to make the transfer here, as planned. Okay, pretty much perfect on where we're doing this, and I can shut down now. Um, don't need the circular, I would rather have the periapsis low if possible. 3,384 meters per second left, so we could deal with some boil off. Let me plot for the moon now. Okay, well we have a not strictly ideal transfer to the moon. Uh, it's not equatorial, it's not particularly in line. And it's not particularly a free return trajectory. It does at least keep us in the system, just in case. But the uh, periapsis isn't very low. But I, I think it'll be all right. I think it'll be all right. I'm not anticipating any problems with this. So uh, let's go with it. And that's in 51 minutes. Okay. Well, I think we should get started on our maneuvers. RCS on. I'll open this tank up and point at the node. Throttle. Okay, J2 is a go. Okay, uh, 5.3 there, left, and come on, I don't know what's showing me right now. Okay, oh, oh, uh, it's got a possible encounter with the moon. Mm, possible moon periapsis of 392 kilometers. Let's decouple and see what it might be. After that, okay, and let's get our solar panels out. And in total, we have 2,259 meters per second on here, which again should be enough to get into orbit around the moon and return. That is our hope. Let me RCS a little bit further here. We'll get, uh, yeah, 96 kilometers is a fine moon periapsis for now. We don't need to go any further, assuming that that's right. And once we get into light, we will orient with the sun using persistent rotation. I don't even think we need to lock uh, our orientation with respect to the sun to get enough electric charge, but hey. Uh, so, uh, relative rotation, sun. And I believe it's supposed to use SES, so that's fine. Yeah, looks all locked to me. Mm, 
Unfortunately, uh, not entirely sure about the encounter right now. So let's just go out there. This is obviously the most important thing to take care of. Still a speculative encounter with the moon there. It might be the wrong way around, actually. It might be prograde rather than retrograde free returnish. Yeah. Well, one way or another. Um, maybe we should see what flattening out our orbit would actually cost here. It's only 30. It'll, it might make things easier on the way back. 43. Yeah, we can afford that easily. Let's do a basic sort of service module engine test. So, node. Of course, this is carrying not, not just enough fuel to make orbit around the moon and come back to Earth. It's also got enough fuel to dock with the space station, so. And so we're, if you will, simulating some maneuvers that would be likely in that kind of mission. Okay, let's start making orbit. Oops, vapor and feed lines. Settle it down. Now we go. Okay, we have made orbit. Uh, let me wait a little bit. We're a bit far from periapsis here. Alrighty, here we go again. Selling the fuel down. And. I think we should have. Well, I think there might be a duration for uh, lunar orbit. Yeah, it has to be for 20 hours. Also, we need to have an apoapsis below 300 kilometers, so. Which is fair. Okay, getting down to a decent orbit here. Want to make sure that the periapsis doesn't get too low. I can be satisfied with that. It's not circular. Um, but we're in orbit. We're in a orbit that will satisfy the contract. We need to wait for 20 hours. Uh, let's see if our electric charge is balanced without running the fuel cells. So we are here in our orbit. We'll be passing the daylight side. Peaks out basically at the top of our electric charge, so we, we're basically refilling completely. And then falling a little bit short. So, in a tight orbit around the moon, it looks like we lose a bit of electric charge each orbit. And we would need to run the fuel cell, which is fine. We've got plenty of fuel cell fuel as you can see. We already made the uh, four days and it's boiled off a little bit but we've still got quite a lot to use. And of course we're not particularly oriented properly with respect to the sun right now. So, uh, I'm trying to see where the sun is. Yeah, this isn't the best orientation. So pretty good all overall as far as the performance. And five more hours. Suppose maybe there's some science to be done. Let's complete the time. Well, if I have her get out and get back in on EVA, will it restart the timer? Yeah, I think so. I think, I mean, I don't want to confuse the contract at all. Let's face it. There's too much that can confuse the contract these days. So, let's, uh, well, we might as well activate CO2 scrubber, though. We have plenty of CO2 capacity as well. And crew report? Well, we've done that sort of thing before. We should be able to put some science on here also. I'll think about that. Okay, right now let's uh, just get, get her back home to demonstrate that this is a safe way to transfer Kerbals to the moon and back. And of course, this, is not, this, this was not fully fueled, so it has greater capabilities than than even what we're doing here. Oh, not, not, uh, 
We're going to start the engines here. Settle fuel down. Okay, and I'll go with uh, 50... 55.5 kilometer periapsis. Hopefully that'll be alright. Okay. Departing the moon now. Let's get a nice cinematic view. No, it just went all dark. Oh well. Okay, gotta be careful here. We're gonna be a fairly heavy pod. Okay, electric charge seems fine. We need to get ready to dump the service module here. Off with the service module. And unlock these fuels. And grow retrograde, or surface negative relative velocity. Here we go. Turn descent mode on. Uh, we should orient with zero roll. And next view, free camera. Oh, we got one of those little thingies. I don't know why we get those little thingies. Got one of those floating artifacts. I remember that from much earlier versions. Still not sure what does it. Okay, standard service module explosions. This is getting awful red. And as usual, we hope that that is just nominal. I'm gonna stop Smart ASS from controlling pitch. Um, there we go. That'll give us some lift here. Vertical speed, as you can see, very much affected by that lift. Ablator is ablating. We're coming in real fast here. Oh, this is a bit worrisome, actually. We'll see how it goes. We're already at 3 G's here. We haven't lost a significant portion of our velocity. So... We are going up right now. So that's not great either. Hmm... I think descent mode is giving us far more lift than I would like it to do. Yeah, that's that's not gonna be good enough. Fifty-six kilometers used to be quite a quite a depth. Uh, with descent mode on like this, with this angle, it's hardly anything. It seems. I'm pretty sure we're going to have to go through again. We didn't lose more than half hour later though. Okay, fifty kilometers. We'll try that. Where have I seen this pattern before? Okay, here we go again. Already the descent mode is lifting our periapsis quite quickly. Please let us come down this time, please let us come down this time. If we don't, it'll still be alright, but it's just so annoying to have to do multiple passes through the atmosphere like this. Okay, yeah, I think we're coming down now. We have a little bit of a hop here. But definitely not going back into space. Uh, most G-forces endured 4.3 so far, but that was on the way up. Not during re-entry, I think. Uh, we haven't uh, really encountered a region where we experienced the most G-forces. We've uh, passed through the the region of maximum heating, but not the G-forces. Okay, we are coming down again. Okay, let's not do physical time warp through this. Where are we? 
seems like an important question. Uh, well, that's not, we're over Africa right now. We're a little bit east of Nigeria. Okay, looking good. G-forces are decreasing. We certainly didn't exceed the G-forces that were experienced on the way up. So, good times. Plenty of RCS fuel to spare. We've used about half. Safe to say that this spacecraft has a lot of margin. Even the ablator after a lunar return, we've got uh, maybe uh, three eighths left. Okay, we can turn descent mode off now. Let's uh, not have smart ASS on either. Let's separate off the fairing on the top. Okay. Okay, well it's uh, 9.4 meters per second again instead of the 6 that I wanted. But I guess that's how these parachutes work. Somebody mentioned uh, dumping fuel. I guess uh, we can just uh, give that a go. I don't know how much... No, oh, wait, ship manifest is not popping up for some reason. But the fuel mass here is negligible. I think uh, if we bring up MechJeb, we should be able to see that. Though, I mean, there's also the food, water, and oxygen. But Well, you wouldn't want to dump the oxygen, actually. Um, it doesn't really show. But the pot itself is pretty darn heavy. One thing that would be nice is if we could, like, dump the heat shield, but that's not... They didn't do that with the Apollo pods. Anyway, looks like Valentina's back home safe anyway, so let's recover. So our contract fulfillment was a success. We got our our Kerbal back and everything. Went into orbit. Of course we've gone into orbit with a Kerbal around the moon before, but not with this spacecraft. Uh, so next up, uh, we'll, we will have already built our Orpheus 2 that is intended to dock with Moonport 1. But first we're going to launch Moonport 1, so we'll hold that in reserve. And as far as technology, if you're wondering, Mature Hydrolox engines are still 76 days away, which is not unreasonable. Effective space planes will only take 165 days, integrated avionics 108 days. So we're progressing quite quickly as far as the sciences are concerned. I'm not feeling an urgent need to buy uh, more upgrade points to upgrade the R&D, though maybe to make it just around 1.5 uh, science would be nice. So we'll get up to 1.5 science per day. There we go. And let's time warp to finish our moon station. Okay, so this is just a cargo launch, but it is a uh, cargo launch carrying a station for the moon. So the stakes are high. Thrall is up, SAS is on, and let's just check staging. All right, the 16 engines light first, as expected. So we're all lined up with the moon, very important. This time, hopefully, we'll get that a little bit closer than we did last time. Ignition. And launch. The Olympus is away. So we will try to get uh, a retrograde orbit around the moon, meaning uh, orbit for the station suited to spacecraft that will be on a free return trajectory. We're now past the speed of sound. No apparent problems here. Okay, everything seems nominal. We are now igniting the core engines. Okay, and separating the boosters. Off they go. Symmetrically this time. 
Alright, I'll go with Fairing Sep here. Obviously, Fairing's always a dodgy business. We'll see if they can clear the body. Ooh, well. <laughs> that, uh, yeah. Well, it worked. That's the important part. Okay, getting ready for the end of the second stage. Much more nominal trajectory this time. And separation. And ignition. Here we go again with the J2. Still amazing how much rocket it takes to uh, launch this. Hope I didn't forget anything. We've got dishes. Let's uh, make sure they're targeting the Earth already. Definitely got solar panels, communitrons. Let's activate. Cannot be deployed while stowed. Well, yeah, I guess that can happen. But they still show connected, even though they aren't. They aren't physically deploying. So they'll probably be deployed when we return to them after going back to the space center and all. Okay, getting close to orbit here. Plenty of margin for the lunar transfer. But I think I, I, I fixed the one on the next Orpheus 2 launch, but I don't think I fixed the RCS ports here. Well, once again, we'll have to rely on the RCS ports on the payload. We could toggle crossfeed on this and that allow the payload fuel to supply the lower lower RCS ports. Okay, that'll do. 233 by 221. And uh, is there a reason to keep cross feed on? Possibly to well I could just lock this hydrogen and oxygen here for the fuel cells and also a little hydrogen and oxygen here and here and all over the place okay I'll come back to you with the moon transfer plotted okay well I've got toggle crossfeed active on the decouplers so let's see node RCS oh now they're firing it's just a matter of having the right fuel in those tanks so we're turning the J2 We'll have up here to make sure it's stable when we try to light it. We are aiming for a retrograde orbit around the moon, but uh, not currently a flat one. I'm of two minds about whether to make it completely flat or not. Maybe we should leave it with some inclination. Though that might make it a little bit trickier for a rendezvous for approaching craft. It's sort of easier to rendezvous with it if it's flat if you're coming into orbit around the moon but from the surface of course if we have different surface locations that uh, might not be at an equatorial latitude then that might be more difficult maybe it's better to favor the stuff on the surface instead of the stuff that's coming into lunar SOI Okay, we're lining up. Fuel remains stable. So, well, let's go. All right. That took a while to ignite, but it's ignited. Okay, well, the game's getting obviously a little bit sticky, which means I should probably restart the game soon. Yep. Uh, let's finish this burn and get this into position. Okay. 
and let's see what kind of orbit we've got. Um, okay, just need a little bit of tweaking. Uh, well, actually, we need to move it over to this side, right? Yeah, so a lot of tweaking. Actually, you know what? Since we're just using the RCS fuel from up here anyway, we should dump the stage, right? There's no point keeping it around now. And right now we're on a trajectory to crash into the moon, which is just fine for this. It'll dispose of this safely. So let's separate. Okay, and forward, which is the direction we want to go anyway. So it's a 32.8 ton station, which means that the, the Olympus can hurl 32.8 tons to the moon, definitely, on translunar injection. I think we should leave it a little bit high. Uh, let's say 160 kilometers. That way stuff coming up from the surface can get into a lower orbit and rendezvous with it. Put it too low and it's harder for them to do so. Okay, let's get some solar panels out, make sure everything is alright with that. Seems like the sun is definitely on our tail. Yep. And we are recharging, so that's nominal, everything good there. And uh, just in case, let me make sure that persistent rotation knows what we're up to. Trying to keep that orientation with the sun. And this is a little bit iffy, but should be all right, just like the last time. I don't see any problems. Let's get over there. We've got oodles of electric charge, by the way, over 800,000 units of electric charge. And 1,021 meters per second of delta V. Our hydrogen for the fuel cells is uh, falling off. We're not going to have that left over it looks like but that's all right and it's irritating because it's in the Gemini I mean a significant portion of it is in this uh, Gemini adapter equipment section which you would think would be able to handle it a little bit better than letting it boil off at that rate because it has tanks that are specially designed for that sort of thing so I think we'll just sort of keep it in this I don't know. Is it a good inclination? Maybe maybe a little bit more moderated. The periapsis is fine. Actually, we'll want it a little bit higher. Mm. Sort of have to keep in mind the 23 degree inclination of the Earth, I think. I don't know how exactly it all works out, but it seems to factor into things. Do we have enough uh, satellite coverage to make sure that we can communicate even if we're on the wrong side of the moon from the Earth? Let's see. Our J2 stage is on its collision trajectory. We've got satellites going around this way and that on the moon, around the moon. It's going to take some time to actually get into orbit here, uh, four minutes or so. I mean, not four minutes, eight minutes or so. We're starting four minutes ahead of time kind of thing. So now we're actually blocked by the moon's surface, but we're maintaining connection, still maintaining connection. This looks pretty good. Looks pretty good. Right now our communication is going to Trinket 1 on from the Atlas. And that's going all the way back. That's an old satellite. Okay, let's get started on it. Well, we have a bit of a problem. We've uh, lost connection at a bad time. Um, okay, well, at least I can shut the engines down and I guess start them again. I wanted to check that. Um, in 1.2.2, I'm pretty sure I wouldn't have been able to do that. Uh, all, all the changing rules. Some people uh, wonder why I I don't do a certain thing sometimes or try something in, in particular 
And often it's because in a previous version, that that wasn't a thing you could do. Uh, so like uh, people who just start KSP in 1.2.2 probably wouldn't even think that you could do shutting down the engine like that, but because you can't do it anymore. The engine would just keep burning regardless. So, because we have uh, now communications implemented in stock such that it can handle that. Well, so not quite as robust a communication system around the moon as I'd like, but we are putting an additional opportunity to relay messages with this. There's plenty of antennae and all. Oh, we have connection now. So actually, there wasn't any crisis in particular, uh, because we were going to get connection back anyway. Okay, let me... Uh, we should probably be tilting down to keep our periapsis from going too low. Well, it's no longer efficient to keep burning like this. Let's uh, get into a nice circular orbit. Wait until apoapsis, lift the other side up. Ooh, our um, our headlights seem to make quite a quite an impression on the moon. Hmm. Okay, here we go. Prograde. We just really need to use RCS to lift that up. 160 kilometers is. You know what? This is already pretty high. Let's go with 140. Let's keep it to that, 135 by 146 for now. Hmm. Well, we seem to be going down. Let's get to periapsis and lower that apoapsis further. Maybe you can make it around two hours. That would be satisfying, I guess. Well, not quite, but I want to keep it above 130 kilometers. So this is good. Let's leave it here. And I don't know if I should do it in this episode. Um, yeah, let's let's go back to Space Center for a sec. Well, I made sure to mark Moonport 1 as a station, but there doesn't seem to be any sort of station rendezvous contracts here or crew transfer contracts. What we do have is, well, we got a human human. Kerbal moon landing and uh, they have to stay two days on the moon. Or uh, we have the same old uh, one in orbit around the moon contract which why well, do that again. We have a much more interesting uh, two around the moon contract but we've got a bit of a problem here. It says uh, inclination between 10 degrees and 30 degrees which uh, is annoyingly specific isn't it? Uh, yeah, because, uh, of course, why would you want it 10 degrees? That's totally preventing us from having a free return trajectory, isn't it? So that's sort of sad. It's sort of sad that they have that requirement. Um, we could do this one easily enough, um, even if you have multiple Kerbals. So I would rather do this one because it has a bigger reward. But uh, given that one condition, I better just go with this. So what we'll do is we would transfer over to the moon with our crewed vessel, stay in orbit around the moon for 20... Mm. Well, if we dock with the station, will it like that? Maybe, maybe we should dock with the station first, then after undocking, stay in orbit for 20 hours, and then come back. I'll pick up the contract anyway. We'll do it one way or another. We need funds for this sort of thing. Um, a crewed mission to land on the moon, we've done before. It specifies highlands, which is interesting. I think, I think I'll hold off on that just for a sec. Uh, everything else is fairly interplanetary except for one satellite in orbit around the Earth. But with a barometer, but it's not worthwhile right now. Okay, so I think I think uh, having a orbit around the moon with Valentina and then launching the station there is uh, good enough for this episode. We'll hold off and do 
the station rendezvous in the next episode. That's bound to take a little bit of time. And after that, and well, while we're doing that, we'll get uh, mature Hydrolox engines complete. And then uh, we need to do a maneuver with our Ganymede lander. It looks like our transfer windows are still a ways away, especially since we're focused mostly on Jupiter and Mars because of the other contracts we've got here. Okay, so on that note, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.